let me tell you why you're here. You are here to be the salt. To be the light. Bringing out the God colors in the world. Amen. How are we doing? We're good? Who's glad they're in church? Give us a wave. Fantastic. Can you believe it's only five, I think it's five weeks till Christmas. Tell you what, who's, who's ready? Who's done all the Christmas shopping? Who's getting a bit anxious right now thinking that's only five weeks away? <laughs> hey, let's pray before we come to the Word. You ready? So God, I just thank you for this opportunity that we have to gather together right now. And Lord, I just pray you'd help me to communicate your Word effectively. God, we just pray that people will be encouraged, that people will be inspired to continue to live this life sold out for you. We even pray for those ones today that may be away from you. We just pray today that they'll make a decision to make you their Lord and Saviour. God, but we just pray above all that you be glorified in this place. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said? Amen. 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 We've we'll been talking about God colours. Uh, a great series out of the... Um, where it talks about in the Bible, where it talks about that we're called to be the light of the world, bringing out the God colours, which means that we're all called to be influencers. We all have a sphere that we can influence. Could be our family, could be our workplace, could be whatever it may be. But I want to encourage you, whatever God has called you to be the influencer in, don't neglect it by thinking it's not as important as what somebody else gets to do. God has placed you where you are in the family you're in so that you can be an influence, that you can be the light, that you can bring the God colour into this world because you can look at life and you can see that at different times life can be a bit bland it can be a bit dark it can be a bit gray but I really believe that our God's one that comes in and brings color in so that we can see things the way that we're meant to see them as we keep bringing what we have to God God can make a beautiful masterpiece out of our life which influences and helps us but also influences those around us and so in Matthew 14, we launched a couple of weeks ago about when Jesus fed the 5,000. And we see that this situation looked like a bit of a situation that lacked colour because the disciples had been ministering, uh, serving people. They'd gone to an isolated place to recharge, but the people followed them there. And it got to a point where they said to Jesus, hey, we're in a faraway place. Let's send these people away so they can get food. But really what had happened is they had got themselves hungry. They had got themselves into a situation where it looked very grey and glim. But what I love is Jesus' response to them was, no, that's not necessary. You feed them. And I think we've got to always look at our life and work out what's necessary and what's not necessary. And I really believe what God has called us to is necessary. And we've got to make sure we're looking after ourselves so we can keep bringing colour into the situation rather than trying to push it away. But he said, you feed them. He said, bring to me what you have. And we know as the story goes that they bring a a few loaves and a few fish. And God used that, multiplied it to turn a situation around that was looking grim. God turned it around to be something that was positive and helped people. But they had to bring something to God. And I think when we look at our life, sometimes we think, what can I bring to God so that he can influence and bring light into a situation? Can I tell you something? We all have something we can bring to God. And it's found in 1 Corinthians 13, 13, and it says this, And now these three things remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. What can we keep as believers, keep bringing to God so that he can use our life to influence? We can keep coming with faith, we can keep coming with hope, and we can keep coming with love. And uh, last week we spoke about faith, but today we're going to be talking about hope. Amen? Amen. And you see even the, the, the context what we're talking about. That there's three primary colours. And we look at it as this, faith, hope and love. And you look at colours, you can make secondary colours out of these three colours, which ultimately you can make every colour. And, and what I'm trying to paint the picture to us today is as we keep bringing these three things, God mixes it together and he makes all the colours that we need so that we can live the life that he's called us to live. But uh, I, I just want to explain one thing a little bit further. This thing here is a 
I think it's called a palette. Palette. And this is called a, what's this called? Paint, paintbrush. <laughs> and uh, so what we've got to understand is that to mix these colours together, you use something like this to mix it together, and then you use the paintbrush to paint the beautiful picture. But what I find in life is that many people want to hold this themselves. They want to mix things themselves. They want to make it happen their way, and they want to paint the story the way that they think is best. But we've got to understand as we come to this, if we want God to do something beautiful with our life, we're going to realize who's holding this, and it should be God. God is mixing things together. God holds the, the paintbrush that's painting the picture of our life. And I tell you what, he'll always paint something and make something better than we can think up on our own. So when we're talking about this today, stop thinking, oh, well, I'm, uh, I'm mixing together, I'm self-made. You know, you can live life that way and you'll never really hit your full potential. But if you want to hit your full potential, realize that God, give this to God to hold, let him mix things together, let him have the pen or the paintbrush of your life and let him paint the picture or write the story of your life. Because as you do that, it's, as I said before, he makes things amazing. But what I find when it comes to a picture have you ever been to somebody's house when they're painting a picture and it's halfway through and it sort of doesn't look like anything? This looks like a mess. But then you get to the end, you're like, wow, how beautiful is it? Sometimes in our life, we can be in the middle and we can think, man, what is God doing? But keep trusting in him. Keep coming with faith, hope and love. Keep giving him things to use and he makes your life a beautiful masterpiece. Because he who began the good work, what will he do? He completes it. So keep it in his hands. Let's talk about hope. But I just want to talk about just, even just a little bit of hope. Because I think sometimes we think hope as in I'm hoping this is going to happen. But I'm talking about a hope as in I know so. That, that I know that God can do this. I'm I know that he can bring the breakthrough into my life. And I want to set this up with a story in 1 Samuel 30, uh, 1 Samuel 30 uh, verse 6. But before we get there, this is a story of David who's out doing the work of the Lord, he's with his mighty men, and when he returns home, his house had been burnt and his family had been kidnapped. Not just his, but the mighty men, the soldiers that were at work with him. And I don't know about you, but that seems like a pretty dark situation where you come home, the house is gone, and the kids are gone. Sometimes you don't mind if the kids are gone, but in this instance, you didn't want them to be kidnapped. It's a pretty dire straight situation. And then above that, the mighty men are now bitter at him because their families and their houses have been destroyed. And he's in a place where it seems like there's no hope. And it says this, David was now in great danger because all his men were very bitter about losing their sons and daughters. And they began to talk of stoning him. Then it says this, but David found strength in the Lord his God. In the midst of a helpless situation, he found his hope in the Lord. And I think we've got to understand in our life that no matter what's going on, no matter what the situation may be preaching to us, we've got to learn to find strength in the Lord. Some versions say that he encouraged himself in the Lord. So we've got to stop discouraging ourselves in the situation and encourage ourselves in the Lord, realizing that we have hope because of Jesus. In the midst of it all, we've got hope. And as we keep bringing hope, to the palate. God can mix it and he can use it to do something great in our life. Yes. David put his hope in God, not the situation. You see, I really believe that we learn helplessness or we learn not to have hope. You might go, well, what do you mean? Let's look at, for example, let's look at elephants. Everyone knows what an elephant is? They know how big they can be, how strong they can be. But you've got to understand the way that they train an elephant so that they can use it for a circus or a zoo, whatever it may be, is that when it's a baby, they chain it to a heavy stone that it can't pull out. It can't move. And so what happens is, is as it keeps trying and struggling to be able to get free, it realizes that it can't be free and it learns helplessness. It learns that it can never be free when a chain is around its ankle, leg. And so when they're older, when they're huge, when that rock that once held them bound, they could quite easily just fling off. Because they've learnt this behaviour, now they can just put a chain around their leg and put a little spike in the ground and they won't try to break free because they've learnt helplessness. They've learnt that they can't be free when there's something around 
their ankle. And I think sometimes in our life, we can be the same. We can learn helplessness. We've tried to be free from something, even, but we've got to understand now we're stronger. Now we know more about what God can do in our life. And we've got to realize that, sure, it may feel like we're, we're bound at times, but now we can break free from that thing that once kept us bound. Because who the sun sets free is free indeed. Come on, the hope that we have, realize that the struggles that we once had or the, the, the helpless situation we felt we were in, come on, we're bigger now, we're stronger now, and we don't have to let that limit us anymore. See, just like you can learn helplessness, I really believe you can learn hope. You can learn hope. An experiment was done many years ago with rats. And they had a bucket of water and they chucked these rats. Pretty horrible experiment, but they chucked these rats in there. And they were swimming along, swimming along, swimming along. I think they lasted about seven or ten minutes before they gave up and drowned. So they got rid of those rats and they tried the experiment again. They put new rats in. And as they're swimming, after six minutes or so, the, 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 the person doing the experiment picked them up, took them out, dried them off, and then put them back in again. And they began to swim, swim, swim again. This time they swam heaps longer than what they did before. And the conclusion of the experiment was this, is that the reason why they swam further and kept going longer is that they thought that the hands were going to come and get them out again. Hope made them go further than what they could go before. They had learnt help. And I think we've got to understand in our life, we've got the hands of the Master. We've got the hands of the Saviour. We've got the hands of God that continually reach down from on high and, and grab hold of us, taking us out of that slippery place and putting us on a rock. Come, we've got a hope in a God that, Man, he is always there for us. Maybe it doesn't happen in the timing that we wanted. But come on, we can have hope in a God that his hands are going to come and grab hold of our life. The hands to help. You see, in Hebrews 11 verse 1, it says, Faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. So hope is the birth of faith. Because faith is the confidence what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about the things we cannot see. So as we keep coming with faith and expectancy that God's going to come through, it builds faith in our life. Hope, it's powerful. And as we keep putting our hope in God, man, he takes us to places that we can only dream of. So I want to talk for a few moments today about how we can learn hope. Just like we saw the elephant learns helplessness, we can be like the rats. I was going to say, let's be like rats, but it's probably not a good sermon uh, title. But let's learn how to build hope in our life so that we can keep swimming, keep going. It's always too soon to quit. You know what? God wants to bring so many great miracles into your life. He wants you to experience so much wonder. But you know what? If you quit, you'll never experience that. Come on, keep holding on, keep believing, keep coming with hope and watch what he does, the beautiful masterpiece he creates out of your life. Be like, man... It, it, and I'm not trying to just say that in a naive way, thinking, oh, well, everything's going to be rosy. But I just know as you keep coming to God and bringing faith, hope, and love in his hands, he can do much more than what you can do in your own. So the first thing we're going to talk about today, about how we can learn hope, is this. We've got to realize that there is joy in God's presence. There is joy in God's presence. Because if we want to be people that have hope in God and bring what we have to him, if we've got a mindset that in his presence it's boring, it's dull, it's grey, we're not going to want to develop and build hope. But if we understand that in his presence there's joy, there's peace, there's love, it makes us want to be able to trust him, get into the word more in us that builds hope in our life. Because in Psalm 16 verse 11 it says this, You will show me the way of life, grant me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever. Come on, in his presence, there's joy. Come on, as we live with him, he has pleasures for us forevermore. I, I just wonder, from the circumstance that you're in, what's been, what's been painted to you who God is? Because if, if, if the image of the God that you've painted in your own mind is one that's a judgmental God, a hateful God, that, that's not who God is. God is loving. And even when we, we uh, heard the verse during the offering, that he loves us so much that he gave, he paid the price, he sent Jesus, the Savior, to put us on the right path so that we can live in the joy and the peace that he has for us. 
Even in Jeremiah 15, 16, it says this, When I discover your word, I devour them. They are my joy and my heart delights. For I bear your name, O Lord, God of heaven's armies. Come on, he's, the, the, in his word, he's delighting. His joy comes from the word of God. You know, I, I want to make sure that as a church that we never become a boring, colorless church. Now we have the Spirit of God in us. We're full of life. We've got the joy of the Lord in our heart. You might go, well, I don't feel like, you know what? If you're going to make following Jesus an emotional decision, you're never going to do anything great for him. It's about a knowing, knowing that in his presence there's joy, knowing that the Holy Spirit is at work in your life, knowing that you're called to be the light, knowing that you're called to bring color into this world. And I believe if we can't do it here, how are we going to do it out there? Amen. Preach it. I'll encourage myself anyway. Then it says uh, in John 15, 11, I have told you these things that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. Okay, let's make sure that we're people that cast and, and not, not casting fear and doubt, but we're casting hope that our message brings joy, overflowing joy to people's life because we're carriers of the good news. And when you hear good news, what does it do? It brings joy to your life. When you hear that somebody's expecting child, it's great news. We're rejoicing about it. And I think we've got to understand when it comes to the gospel, it's good news. Let's keep sharing the good news so that we can see joy and overflowing joy come into people's lives. It's in his presence that we can experience true joy. The second thing we can do to build hope is we've got to engage in worship. You know, this, this year we've... The, the, the word that's been used the most is ISO, isolating. And uh, we, we've got to understand as believers that we're not called to, even though we might have to isolate at times when the COVID was happening, we're never truly alone because we've got a God who's there with us. He said that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Do you believe that? And we've got to understand that we've got to engage in our worship with God. Worship's not just about singing. It's our lifestyle. It's a lifestyle of worship, being obedient to God. And so I, I want to encourage, we want to build hope in our life. Let's engage in worship, engage in being um, uh, uh, obedient to God. When it even comes to our corporate gathering, when we're worshiping God with our, with our song, with the fruit of our lips, do that. Get into the flow of worship. Because when you're in the flow of worship, you're engaged in what God wants and it brings hope into your life. Because I, I don't know about you, but there's been times in my life where even when it comes to our public gatherings where it's just like during the week I've had things going on I'm like I don't know how to how to do is there hope in this situation then I'll come into the house of God I'll lift my hands and worship and then there's just a, a download from heaven of hope and of of strategy and that would never have happened if I didn't get into the flow and engage in worship so if we want to build faith we're going to build hope in our life come let's engage in the right thing get into the flow of worship instead of isolating yourself and pulling yourself away because many times in helpless situations, we, we, our inclination is to isolate and pull away. Where really it's the worst thing we can do. We've got to engage more in what God has for our life. Amen. Amen. Number three. Build healthy relationships. We want to develop hope, learn hope in our life. We've got to get the right people around us. I remember hearing a story in Job when Job had gone through that crazy season and he said, who can find hope for me? And, and uh, that's why it's good to have people around you. When you can't see hope, you've got people that can speak into your life and that can help you to realize that God has a better way, that God hasn't finished yet. You're just in the middle and he that began the good work will complete it. Keep trusting. We need to have people around us that are healthy uh, to us because we can all identify that there is such thing as toxic relationships. And sometimes they just naturally cling to us. But you've got to understand that if you want to be the influencer and the light that God's called you to be, you need to have healthy relationships that are speaking hope, that are pointing, that people that are pointing you to Jesus. So that you can go, so then out of that health, you can go and reach those ones and bring them into relationship with God as well. What does it say in Ecclesiastes 4, verse 10 and 12? If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two lying close together can keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? A person standing 
alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. So what's it saying? Hey, two are better. Two in agreement are better. You know, as, as people of God, we're not called to stand against each other and fight against each other. We're meant to be standing back to back, fighting against the principalities and darkness of this world by allowing God to do a work in our life. Realize that we're not called to fight to get against each other. And can I tell you something? Our battle is never against people. Our battle is always a spiritual thing that's going on and that's put things in its right perspective. We're called to love people in Jesus' name, not the wrong thing that's going on. So building healthy relationships. Do you have good people around you? I hope you do. We've got a church full of good people that are encouraging people that know what it is to keep bringing their best to God and God uses them to be an influence in this world. And and come on, let's continue to be those people that keep bringing what we have to God because as we do that, I tell you what, God wants to do something amazing through this church. He is doing something amazing. He's going to continue to do it as we keep bringing what we have. All right, where are we up to? What point? Number four. How do we build hope? We've got to live on mission. Live on mission. Live out the mission of God. You know, as disciples, what's a disciple? A disciple is somebody that follows Christ, is being changed by Christ, and is living out the mission of Christ. Now, if we want to begin to develop hope in our life, let's live on the mission. What's the mission? It's living for something bigger than yourself. That's why it's so good to belong to a church. We're living for something bigger than ourselves. Come on, we can do so much more together than we can do by ourselves. Now, what does it say in Jeremiah 29, 11? For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Come on, the plans that God has, the calling, the mission that God has for your life, it's there to give you, a, uh, to give you hope. Come on, let's work on outworking and outwalking the call of God on your life. Don't just go, well, I've done, uh, I'm, I'm too old or I, I haven't got the right qualifications, whatever it may be. Can I tell you something? God is somebody that has a call for everybody and the, the call cannot be taken back. Come, each day you can choose to pick it up. I'm going to outwalk this call upon my life. I'm going to walk on the plans that God has for me. I'm going to live for something bigger than myself. I'm going to live for the greatest mission, the greatest cause on earth, which is the cause of Jesus Christ. Being somebody that can influence and be the light and bring color into this world for the glory of God. Living on mission. You might be sitting there going, man, just, just living in general is really hard. Can I say that? If you're living always focused on yourself, and it's quite easy, we've all been there, it's a depressing place to be. We're our worst critics. Nothing will ever be right. We've got to get our eyes off ourselves, put them on Jesus, begin to serve people, begin to outwork the call of God on your life and watch the joy and the hope that that brings into your life. The last thing is this. How do we build hope? We've got to remember that we're more than conquerors. Romans 8, 37. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. And I had a great revelation this week about this. You know, I've grown up in church my whole life and I've heard more than conquerors and I sort of understood the spirit of it, but I never quite understood what it meant. And, and this is what I believe it means, is that when we conquer something, it's a, it's a personal thing we've done. Like if I needed to be set free from something, if I need to accomplish something, uh, I've conquered that. I, I'm, I've got myself out of it. I've conquered it. But to be more than a conqueror is to go back in and help others overcome as well. We've got to understand that I'm more than a conqueror. Yeah, I've conquered. I'm out. But I'm more than a conqueror. I'm going back in and I'm going to use what God has done in my life to help other people conquer that as well. Come on, let's be a church that understands that we're more than conquerors. We're not just there just for our own success. But we go back in and we help people overcome. Because you've overcome things in your life. You are a conqueror. But come on, go in and help somebody else overcome. Maybe it was in your marriage. Maybe it was about a certain situation in your life. You've conquered it now. Go back in and help others. Because in doing that, I really believe it builds hope in your life. And not just in your life, in the other people's life. Because they've seen what God can do in your life. Now help them 
Share hope with them. Because if God's done it in your life, He can do it in their, hope, their life. Come on, let's be hope sharers in Jesus' name. So I, I don't know what you've learnt. I don't know what helplessness you've learnt like the elephant. But let's decide to be like, <laughs> it's almost funny, be like the rats and realise that, man, there's the hands of a God that's always going to be there for us. Even though it doesn't turn out the way that we want, He's holding the paintbrush. He's holding the, the colours. And He's going to mix it. He's going to make something beautiful to bring glory to Him and bring satisfaction to us. Can we all bow our heads and close our eyes for a few moments? Let us thank you, Jesus, that you're here. Thank you that you're working in people's lives. You know, I want to give people an opportunity here today that maybe you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Saviour. Maybe you don't have a relationship with God. Because I know that you can have one with Him today. In Ephesians 2, it talks about that we are saved by grace through faith. It's a gift. It's not that we can earn it and work for our salvation. It's a gift. Because if we can work for it, then we boast in ourselves. But it's about boasting in Jesus and, and what He's done so that we can have relationship with God. So you've got to understand, you were created to have relationship with God. If you want to live your best life, if you want to live the way that God wants you to live, it's about having a relationship with Him and walking on the plans that He has for your life. It's not about following rules because rules about relationship always end in rebellion. But rules with relationship lead to obedience and positive change. And so I want to give people an opportunity here today that maybe you're away from God or maybe you've once made a decision to follow Him but you've walked away. Come on, make a fresh decision today to make Jesus the Lord and Saviour of your life. Either in this room or online, what I'm going to do in a few moments, I'm going to count to three. If you want to give your life to Jesus, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. Now, raising your hand doesn't make you a Christian. It's by the confession of your mouth that you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and, and the belief in your heart that He rose again. It's by that that you're saved. But I just want to know who I'm praying for. We want to help you with your next step. So if that's you here today, you want to give your life to Jesus for the first time or coming back, the count of three, lift your hand up high. If you're online, you can participate in this as well. In the chat room, there'll be a raised hand button. I want to encourage you to click that at the count of three. So if that's you, I believe today's the day of salvation. I believe that God wants to do something in your life today. So if that's you at the count of three, lift your hand up high. One, two, three. If that's you all over this place, we want to give your life to Jesus. Lift it up. See that hand. Who's going to be next today? See that hand over there. Great decision. A couple of hands going up. Once you put it up and I've seen it, you can put it down. You know, what are we going to do right now? I'm going to lead you in a prayer. I'll give you the words to say, but you mean this from your heart. And as a church, we're going to say it together to encourage you. It goes like this. Dear God, thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for me. I believe that you rose again. I confess that I'm a sinner and I repent of that. Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and Saviour. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Can I just rejoice of all of heaven? Those people giving their lives to Jesus. We're going to come to our baby dedication very soon. But just before um, Mel comes up and reads those out, um, if you responded to that older call in the foyer, even if you didn't raise your hand up, but you said that prayer and you meant it from your heart, we want to help you in your next step. So in the uh, foyer, there'll be people holding up Bibles after the service. Go and tell them you made that decision, that you said that prayer and you meant it, and they'll give you a Bible and they'll help you with your next step. Online, click that raised hand button and click um, connect with us. We want to send you a Bible as well.